everybody, it's Mrs. Grass here with another episode of Art Ventures at Home. I'm outside today. I'm getting inspired by the things that are outside. Trees are on the docket for today's art lesson. I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks on how to draw them. And I promise that by the end of this lesson, you're gonna feel super good about drawing trees. Okay, so if it's a really nice day out, I would bring your sketchbook and come outside and find a nice spot to sit. Bring out your sketchbook or a stack of paper. You can use that sketchbook you made with us a few weeks ago. Bring out a pencil and um, just sit and, and look at the stuff around your backyard or your yard in general to draw. Um, I've said in the past that having something in front of you to draw is going to help you draw it better. So really looking at what is here, it's going to help. I'm going to show you in a little bit a tree that I drew from, from my backyard from looking at it from the window. So if it's a not so nice day or if it's a little chilly or you want to be inside, you can draw the trees that you see in your yard from your window. Just gather your supplies and enjoy drawing. Here is what you're gonna need for today's lesson. For the tree drawing lesson, you're gonna want something to draw with and something to draw on. You would probably like to start in pencil just in case there's something you wanna change about your drawing, but you could use ink or a marker or a crayon or charcoal or chalk, you choose. And then for whatever you wanna draw on, you can take out the sketchbook you made with us a few weeks ago, or you can draw on a piece of paper or a sketchbook you already own. And for the tree painting lesson that I'm going to give you, uh, you need something to paint on, a sketchbook page. I'm going to show you how to use watercolors. If you have watercolors at home, take those out. You can also do this with acrylic paint, or if you don't have either, uh, you could look to your baking cabinet for some food coloring. Just remember to dilute it in water. And then of course you need some paint brushes. Uh, once you have the supplies, uh, you're ready to go. All right. So we're going to talk about drawing trees today and I'm really grateful to be home. I know social distancing can be a difficult thing for us, but at least we're home with our uh, family and we're safe and we're healthy and I hope you're feeling the same. And I'm really excited to be out here in nature drawing something as simple as a tree today. So trees, they can be pretty intimidating to draw. They've got a lot of parts and they've got a lot of texture. And when they're in bloom, a lot of color. But I'm gonna give you a, a simple trick on how to draw trees, okay? The first thing is, we don't wanna think about drawing trees as something like this, a stick with a puff at the top. That's a great symbol of a tree. I know that's a tree. If it's in a drawing, I, I could tell that's a tree. But we're gonna kick it up a notch, okay? And my trick for drawing trees is knowing how to write the letter Y. Okay, so like I said, this is a really great symbol of a tree, but if you wanna kick it up a notch, you could think of the tree as the letter Y. So we're gonna start off really simple, but once you know the shape, then you can start adding more details so that you can kick it up even to a bigger notch and make a, a more realistic looking tree. So if I draw the letter Y and then add another Y to it and another Y and another Y and every time I add the letter Y, I make that letter Y a little smaller and a little smaller, I'll get something that resembles a tree, a more realistic tree than something like this. Um, and if you practice this, you're gonna get better at it because practice makes better. So when I was out um, drawing this tree, okay, I thought about drawing the letter Y. And if you look really closely, you can see that there's a Y here, okay? And then another Y here. And if you break down the tree, you're gonna see there's, it's full of Y, it's just the letter Y. So if you, could, if you can write the letter Y, you can draw a tree, all right? 
Uh, this is a great time of year to draw trees too and practice drawing trees because they don't have the leaves on them so you really get a good look at the structure of the tree and the branches. So if I were drawing or when I got started to draw, drawing this tree, I started with the trunk first and I used um, some of my favorite markers. The, these are um, like a grayscale marker. They're uh, like a brush pen. They're so much fun to use. One of our teachers, Jess Mann, she introduced me to these. She taught a class on them and that's where I learned how to use them. They're, they're really great brushes. So I, I started by drawing my trunk first and then as I stood and really looked at the tree, I noticed where the letter Y came into play and I drew that out, okay? If I were you, I'd start in pencil just in case there's something you wanna change about your tree, okay? So I noticed that a branch came up this way and another branch went this way. But every time I added a branch, I noticed that, oh my gosh, this is the letter Y, and over here is the letter Y. So really my tree is made up of letter Y, so it made it a little easier for me to, to, to draw it. And as I drew, I added more details. So I'm going to keep going drawing this tree and uh, you could check it out while I'm drawing. up your line. If you notice, I took this marker out, and then I took this marker out, and this marker out. This one's really fat, this one's sort of medium, and this one's skinny mini. And if you change up the different kinds of lines that you put in your sketch, you're gonna have an even better sketch. That's my little artist tip for the day, secret artist tip. So if you're using pencil today, think about using the tip of the pencil so you get a skinny line, and the side of the pencil tip so you get a fatter line. I've also taken out a couple of different colors. You can see I have a really, really light gray and a really, really dark black, and then some colors in the middle. That really, really light gray is helping me figure out where I'm gonna lay out my branches and to put in some branches that might be farther off in the distance. And my darker colors are helping me to define the branches that I think are really important for you to see. And also, visual texture. Visual texture is how you create uh, the look of how something might feel. And you can see that I'm doing that on the trunk of my tree by making all of these dash marks and lines. sketch. I think it looks great. I've added my visual texture. I've got the branches in that I want. 
I like it. I think this is a good study in a tree. I can't wait to see how you guys do. So I want to show you how you can use some paint to create a tree too. It's in the style of Bob Ross. I have to admit, I'm a huge Bob Ross fan. I know that a lot of you are probably uh, on the same page with me. Bob Ross really was an amazing person. And the way he painted trees is so easy peasy lemon squeezy. And once you start practicing the way that he did it, you're gonna get better at it and trees are gonna feel so simple to you to add to your pictures and to go out and to paint them um, and draw them out in nature. Bob Ross used a fan brush for most of his trees and this is a fan brush here. You can see it looks like a little fan, okay? And the bristles are spread out sort of like in a fan shape. If you have one of these, amazing, that's great. If you don't, no worries. Find the brush that's the flattest in your collection of brushes, okay? Um, and you want to use um, a watercolor brush, which is a really very soft, bris like bristly brush. If it feels really soft, it's probably a watercolor brush. Uh, if you don't have a watercolor brush, no worries. Use whatever brush you got. And you wanna find the brush that's the flattest or the fattest. Um, if you had a choice between one of these, you're going to want to choose this one right here. But it'll work with any of these brushes. I'm going to show you with a fan brush and then with a few of these so you can see. So I have watercolors here. I'm just going to wet my brush and then wet my paint. I'm going to start with a little bit of brown on my paintbrush. And I am going to use my fan brush to tap out a, a tree trunk. Just like that, I'm going all the way down. I'm thinking pine trees today, okay? So I'm gonna clean my brush off, oops. And then I'm gonna pick my green. I'm gonna load my brush up with some green. And I'm gonna make sure that I have tons and tons of paint on my brush. And this is how, you know, the unstoppable Bob Ross did it. He would take the very top, tippy top of his, um, or the very edge of his fan brush, okay? And he would tap very lightly at the top. And then he'd start to tap a little heavier and a little heavier and a little heavier until he was going back and forth with the widest part of his fan brush and he would get a tree, a pine tree, just like that. Okay, so tapping really lightly at the top with the point, the edge of the brush and then slowly turning it until you get really fat. And then you can go in with like, you can mix a darker green or a lighter green and add highlights or shadows, something like that, okay? Easy peasy. All right, so now I'm gonna show you with just a regular flat watercolor brush. This comes in like a paint set. You might have this at home. So I'm gonna use the tip first to paint in my trunk, okay? And then I'm gonna rinse it off and I'm gonna load my brush up with green. Okay, and then I'm going to use the very t corner of my brush and I'm going to tap it really lightly at the top and I'm going to go back and forth a little and back and forth until finally I turn my brush and I'm using the very flat edge of it and I'm going back and forth and back and forth and pressing harder and harder and harder and going all the way down. And as I reach the end of my tree, I make my taps wider and wider so that the tree looks like it's going from skinny to fat, okay? And then I can go back in just like I did with that first one and I can get a darker green and I can tap in some highlights or some shadows just like that to make a pine tree, okay?
So that's with a regular watercolor brush, not anything fancy like a fan brush. All right, I want to show you one last thing, how you can use paint to add leaves to maybe a drawing that you've done of a tree. This is the one I did earlier when I was sitting at my window. I'm going to take one of the brushes out that I took out to make my pine tree examples here. And I'm going to use the same technique I did for the pine tree and that's just loading my brush up with paint and tapping using the tip of my brush to create um, sort of like a leaf texture. So I'm going to use one of these guys. It's like a roundy sort of brush and I'm going to load it up with green. I'm kind of mixing a few color greens together to make a green that I like, a leafy sort of green I like. And once my brush is loaded with color, I'm just going to go up here to the tips of the branches. I'm going to tap out some leaves. I'm just tap, 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 tap. And I'm going to go around to all the edges of each of the branches I've drawn and I'm just going to tap in some leaves. Okay, making it a little bit more realistic. I could go ahead and sit and sketch out all these leaves. Right now there are no leaves on my trees yet because it's only the start of spring so I'm sort of imagining what this would look like with leaves. But just tapping in this texture gives it a little bit more detail. Tap, 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 just at the ends of each of the branches, like where the branches start to change or disappear. Okay, there's my tree. Before I say goodbye, I wanna give a couple of shout outs to Henry and Oliver for following along with our lessons. Amazing work, I'm so proud of you guys. I can't wait to see you back in the studio. And to all of my students, my middle school students and our homeschoolers and our Art Venture Saturday kids and our independent study students, we miss you guys so much and we can't wait to see you back in the studio again as soon as we reopen. We can't wait to be sketching with you by the pond or printing with you in the print shop or exploring new art in the gallery. We miss you, we can't wait to see you again. Uh, don't forget to share what you've created with us on our social media outlets. Uh, on Facebook at Gallery North, on Instagram at Gallery North LI. If you share what you've been making, we can give you a shout out too. Uh, and if you want to rewatch these videos, you can do that on our website at gallerynorth.org or on our YouTube channel gallery, called Gallery North. And if you're on our YouTube channel, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. We can't uh, wait to see you guys following us on our YouTube channel. The more followers we get, the more fun we can have on YouTube. So don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And if you are feeling really good about uh, helping Gallery North out, during this very challenging time, you can do that on our website. Uh, on the Art Ventures at Home page, you can donate, uh, or you could do that on our, our home screen. There's a donate button. Uh, if you donate, we can continue to provide you with these Art Ventures at Home lessons every day. Uh, until tomorrow, for your next daily dose of art, I'm Mrs. Grass. See you guys later.